Um, there's no evidence that the Oliphants came from Norway. Um, it's almost certain that the Oliphants came from Normandy and France. How do we know that? Uh, well, it's unlikely that, um, that they acquired the name Oliphard in England. And you will read um, theories that um, people have written that um, Lilford had um, a chapel on one side of the, the river, and it was the Holy Ford, and um, that's where the, the Oliphard name comes from. Um, OK, next slide. But thanks to Dan, um, we, who found this information and sent it to me, Osbernus Oliphardus, um, uh, um, in um, uh, um, Bois-Maigle, um, which is um, in Ancretville, um, St. Victor. Um, it's in France, anyway. It's in Normandy. Um, he um, was, it was for him that lands were being given um, to the church. Um, he was probably dead, although he was about um, 1046, 1048. He was probably dead. It was his son, William, who was actually giving the, the, the lands um, to the church. Um, and the whole French question is an, a, a, you know, another thing. They would not have been giving everything they've got to the church. People used to give a tithe or 10% of what they'd got to the church and, or less. Um, anyway, but thanks to him, we know that the Oliphards were in Normandy before, um, before um, Lilford. Right, this is a genealogical chart. Um, after, by the way, after the talk, um, those that want to go to the shop, and there probably isn't room for everybody at once, but um, we, you know, we'll, we'll just see how we manage, see how we get on. Um, you will see the original of this which is on vellum, um, and it, it was um, created in the 19th century, I mean, in the 1800s, um, about 1890. Um, it was based on um, another a prototype, and, and we've got upstairs the second uh, prototype. Um, the first one was created for a 21-year court battle between um, different factions um, for the inheritance of the guest. Um, but you'll see the original of this says, but it's got from God um, right the way through it as well. Um, and you know, the point about genealogy is that you always find um, a re revise the information. It's the same with history. Um, but yeah, okay, next one. Um, just um, the same thing. Um, vision. Um, here we've got the all of. I will. I will give a lot of detail to this lot, skim through that, and then after that, we'll go very quickly through the, the more, um, you know, the, the subsequent um, generation. The first four chiefs, who you heard about regarding Boston last week, David Oliphard um, came across the steep road. Um, David Oliphard, of Justiciar of the Lothian, godson of the King of Scotland, um, owned Lilford, um, as you heard last night. And Sir Walter David. Um, 1178, um, given Strigi, um in 1170, um, um, 1173, 1178. Um, this was exchanged um, for Abadegi around about um, 1183. And from then on, they, they owned Abadegi for about 350 years. Um, then Sir Walter. Um, the, uh, the third justiciar of the Lothian, and then David. We don't know what, you, you remember last night I told you about Sir William um, Oliphant as um, a fourth justiciar. We don't know where he fits in, but he was not the heir to Sir Walter, David was, and, it, and nor was Murray. Okay, keep rolling. So basically, what, what we've got here, Roger, there are actually a couple of generations in there I'm not going to cover, um, because really I'm interested in the chiefs and Pre-Scotland, they are not deemed to be chiefs because they weren't part of a clan. Um, you know, that, that is a system um, which only exists in Scotland. And so from the time that the Oliphard or Oliphant um, reached Scotland is when the clock starts ticking. Yeah? So, but these two are actually one person. And I know that because Gordon McGregor has done lots of research and um, says that it was only one person. Then we've got the two Sir Walters. Um, and then, well, let, let's go um, to the side, because this is really the first. Um, so, um, David, um, let's um, learn about him, because he was um, the first. 
born between 1113 and 1117. And again, we have Zant and other books um, out there. We know that because um, David the First became um, only married Matilda, who was um, who ah who remembers from last night what relationship was Matilda to William the Conqueror? No. <laughs> Anybody else? Was anyone listening last night? What? N Great niece. Who said that? Ginny. What? Thank you. Yes. The only person who was listening last night. My God. <laughs> right. Okay. Great niece of William the Conqueror. Um, she was the Countess of um, Northamptonshire. Um, she was. She had numerous ca um, countesships, and she had lands all over England. Huge tracts of land. So either you held your lands direct from the king, if you were important enough, you had big enough land holdings, or you um, held it from an overlord. Yes. David, um, okay, basically what happened is that... Uh, no, 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 no. Um, they, the, the king married Matilda. Um, and a baby was born to the Oliphard, and so they named it after Matilda's new husband, who then became the godfather to that baby. Yeah? Now, that, which is another um, important and interesting point, actually. There's no way, if they were nobodies, that um, the, you know, somebody of, of royal lineage, and both of them, Matilda and, and David, um, you know, there's no way that they would be godparents to a complete nobody. I mean, that's, you know, yes. So. Does that, does that make any sense? They're about. He, he was, um, I mean, she, they married in 1113, and he was born sometime between 1113 and 1117. Not, 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 yeah, he was Godfather. He, he was not related. Well, we think, well, that the, whether or not they were related is a whole different thing. I mean, well, the point is that why was somebody who owned, a, I mean, who, who held a small amount of land from them a, um, a godson? Um, I mean, it's, it, 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 that doesn't um, um, sit right, but it, it was the reality. So you know, there's obviously much more behind the family at that time than we have proof of at this moment. Yes, Rob. Um, David Oliphard um, would not have um, received Daughtry. David, by the way, I said on the um, previous slide that he had Lilford. He didn't. His brother um, had Lilford, and then um, his heirs, the, the, the Sir Walters, et cetera, had Lilford. Um, but he had Daughtry, um, and he um, basically it was the, um, the godparent, um, King David of, of Scotland. Um, was out of favor by 1138, so he must have been given um, Daughtry before 1138. Yes. Okay. Um, can um, Daughtry is a piece of land um, in Northamptonshire, very near to, um, not far from Lilford, but he never had Lilford. He had Daughtry. Okay. Um, okay. Let's roll with the next. Um, we know that because um, this is the year that King David, uh, the first son. Was stripped of these lands because um, David had passed everything on to Stephen and um, I mean, his, well, to his son. His son was uh, backing Matilda against Stephen, and so uh, they, uh, Scottish kings were stripped of the land. So be, you know, he, David Oliphard must have um, received lands before 1138. If he was born between 1113 and 1117, um, then, well, if he was born after 1113, but um, but 21 before 11:38, then the uh, the margin keeps rolling. Um, so 21 years, 38 is 11:17.
So basically, he was born sometime between 1113 and 1117. Thanks to Zan. Uh, I mean, Zan was the one who um, saw that logic, and, 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 and he was right. He saw it through. Does that make sense? Great. Okay. 1141, Oliphard Rift. Um, uh, Winchester. Sawtree Abbey was built to prevent David Oliphard from able to come back to those lands. Um, the Oliphards in Scotland and England continue, continue to own lands in England, as we saw yesterday, um, until the 1300s, um, when, um, well, yeah. Um, David Oliphard, okay, and this is Sawtree Abbey. It was no small abbey they built on those lands to make jolly sure he never came. Yeah? I mean, you know, this, back one. There we are. I mean, this, this is the, the church, or, I mean, it's more like a cathedral. Um, and was for the monks, etc. Uh, a few more facts. Um, okay, he was godson of um, David I. Um, saved the king's life in 1141. Um, um, had to flee to Scotland. Um, he, he, they certainly came to Scotland at the very highest social level. Um, again, um, why? How could that be when if they were nobodies other than very small um, sub landowners? In England, um, given the, um, he was given the estates of Smalham and, and Roxburghshire, and um, who, those who came on the gathering that went down to um, Smalham and Trailing, um, I think it was 2009, um, will remember um, going and seeing those properties. He was made the first justiciar um, circa 1165. I mean, he was the first justiciar of the Lothian. Um, he governed the southern half of Scotland. Um, his seal is on a charter, uh, shows the three crescents, nearly 870 years ago. You know, the, our heraldry has been around. Heraldry was around before surname. Yeah? Okay. Um, they've been using the, yeah. Uh, the olive. He died about 1170, and the first Sir Walter took over. Curiously, by Sawtree, uh, there's a, a village, and the village pub is called the Elephant and Castle, and they don't know why. Um, and the next one you'll see it in detail. There we are, the Elephant and Castle. Um, I mean, it, uh, the earliest Scottish olifant from 1141 on, onwards till 1252, and we know 1252 is when um, Sir David died. Keep going. Uh, Sir Walter's second chief, David's son, um, uh, was a justiciar, and um, Prince William are uh, the earls, um, Earl and Countess of Strata. Um, another one, the earldom of um, Athol, was also a Mormonship, and that was always given to a younger son of the royal family. So it has been nine, ten creations of the earldom of Athol, um, and um, the last one was the Murray. Um, I mean, the Murrays were only a noble I mean, 300 years after um, the Oliphants got their first title. Um, keep going. Her dowry was the lands in Strathern, Strathern, near Crete. Uh, but um, in they were exchanged for Aberdeen. Um, at stayed in the family till um, 1632. I said 350 years. I'm wrong. I'm not fallible. I mean, infallible. Um, it, you know, it was um, 450 years. The family have been living in Lower Strathern, where we are right now, years ago, and only stopped um, um, for early 20th century, um, um, 1906 or thereabouts. Um, um, you know, they, they were in this area and in this area for so very, a very, very long time. Um, the senior line of the family, the first um, four, um, David, Sir Walter, Sir Walter, David, were. Um, based um, down at Boston. Um, but the, the first Sir Walter, having married the Mormer of Strathern's daughter, got the lands of Abadegi up here. And so basically, a younger son came and settled up here. And that's the next branch of the dynasty. Um, the younger line, uh, well, uh, the elder line died out. Um, in the Lothians, and became the senior line of, of the family. 
Um, okay, keep rolling. So, possible where we've been today. This this property is so important, um, and there's no, just no way that it would start any other plan. Keep going and again. So, having covered um, David, I mean the two Davids, it's one, um, the Walter and Wright, who came along. Um, so, Sir William Oliphant, brother of. Oh, right, okay, yes, this is the junior line. I was thinking of the Sir William, who was the justiciar of the Lothian. No, completely different. Is the, um, the, the Sir Walter had two sons. He had Walter, the second Sir, um, Sir Walter, and he had uh, William. And it was William and his descendants who were in, uh, in this area, okay? He was brother to the second Sir Walter. Um, and it, who was the next chief? Then um, I'm skimming through these because we don't. Um, they're not people who did anything heroic or important um, in um, in the great scheme of things. Yeah. Um, Sir William Oliphant uh, defended Stirling Castle. Um, son of of um, the William above. Okay. Um, the, Sir Philip may have succeeded his brother, um, and and but this chap, the other. In, there was a battle in, in about um, 1296 at um, Dunbar, and um, the, the two Williams, or the, no, the two Williams were captured at the Battle of Dunbar. One of them was a knight, and one of them was an esquire. Um, in other words, he hadn't uh, reached the point of being, being a knight at that point. So we guessed that um, at that stage that there was an age difference between but we didn't really have all the facts. Anyway, um, I'll know that, um, and I'll come to that in due course, that you know, Sir William, but probably um, the younger brother, succeeded. Um, but, um, but it quickly went to um, the next um, Sir William. Keep going. Um, and then um, his son was Sir Walter, who married an Elizabeth Bruce. Basically, say that they're different. He didn't have any children. Um, yes, John. I just do whatever I want. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, that's the. Also, um, the point is, it's easier if we use the name Oliphant for everybody because then people understand that it is one family. Whereas, you know, if, if I'm, I'm being specific and it's confusing. Yeah? Um, right. So, Walter, yeah. So, William, defender of Stirling Castle, 1304, one of the signatories of the Declaration of 1320. We are going to our both actually on Friday. Um, to see where um, the declaration was signed. Okay, right. Um, he was also one of the three elephants who have been imprisoned in the Tower um, of, of London. I mean, I went to the Tower of London and it just felt like a prison to me because I knew that um, three different elephants in three different centuries had been um, prisoners there. Keep going. This, this is him. This is a sketch by Thomas Oliphant, um, and it's not actually terribly accurate, but it was so badly defaced that. About 10, 15 years ago, um, it was um, they, they received, and it's much um, clearer to see um, the the, um, the the detail now than it was um, before uh, inspiration. Um, it looks a bit like that. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, Sturge of Steel, um, Sterling Castle. Um, do we have any of these posters left? Um, no, but I'm just thinking. I might have one, and, and if so, then we really ought to try and get more printed from it, um, because um, they're obviously popular. Um, right, okay. Um, this is a, a reconstruction 
um, of the siege um, with the um, siege engines, um, you know, trying to batter um, the castle um, without much who were starved out rather than, um, you know, driven out by um, war engines. Right, let's keep going. Um, Oliphard is um, called by the English chroniclers a doughty knight, one among a thousand. Um, his garrison numbered um, 140 men, where his cousin Sir William, the Knight of Dublin, um, and, and in fact in the records he's called Sir William Dublin. Um, but we know from um, you know, the Battle of Dunbar and things like that that um, you know, there was a William Oliphant Esquire um, as well. And we know, I mean, it's one and the same person. Um, okay. Uh, land taken for seventeen uh, new style um, where we will be driving um, through um, and you'll see at the site of Baltraig and also Hatton Castle, which is built on those lands um, on uh, Friday. Um, this is where Hatton Castle is. First, um, he was given as well, which is in Edinburgh now. Um, uh, this been on uh, one year, I mean, one of the last two um, gatherings, we went up to, to Glensoff um, and to, to the area um, just south of Aberdeenshire where it's up there that was created. And so um, Robert the Bruce gave um, um, Sir William Muir House in, in exchange. Um, okay, lands given thir circa 1320, Um Some of you, um, if you've been following the um, Facebook page uh, for the Oliphant Clan will um, remember that um, there was a charter um, uh, for Oxfordshire which came up for sale at auction uh, for the lands of Oxfordshire, which had been given, um, it was a grant by Robert the Bruce of those lands to, to William Oliphant. It, it costs about £25,000 um, and it is something which we absolutely should have been the buyers of, but we didn't have the, the wherewithal to do it. It, it was still I mean, we're doing incredibly well. I mean, the Clan Association of North America is doing incredibly well, but we are still in our infancy um, and we are still growing. And, um, you know, things are going very much in the right direction, but we could not um, muster the muscle to buy that car. Um, and gas as well. Okay, keep going. Um, that's um, gas as it was built by um, the, the Oliphant of gas after, after. Um, Condi, those that were in the nickel um, coach this morning, um, I told you, I, I pointed out the stream uh, where um, um, Oliphant of Condi died um, on his way back from um, dinner um, the, with the Gask Oliphant. Um, the Gask Oliphant, um, well, the, the trustees just gave the Gask back to, um, the, um, to the Gask Oliphant um, from um, Condi's estate, and they then built this. Um, about about thirty years later, um, this that's um, Hatton Castle. In fact, at the time that it was built, it wasn't called Hatton Castle at all, uh, because Hatton means um, the whole tune. Um, in other words, it, it's the home farm. Um, it's it's the the collection of buildings beside the main um, hall or castle of the estate. So uh, to call it Hatton Castle is counterintuitive. It it, it doesn't. Make it would have been the Oliphant Castle, at, it, it would have been Newtile Castle, the castle at Newtile. Yeah. Um, which was another property that they had, um, which is up the west coast. Aberdegi House, which is where Lord Petiviot lives now. Um, again, we're not allowed to go there. Duplin Castle, um, there have been five different Duplin Castles. This, this is the penultimate, and then the next one, um, that is the change. Oh, they're, they're there. I didn't see them, and it's smaller. You see um, three ball, four balls on the top there. That's because they are barren, and um, on a barren forest, you have four balls. So um, they have put four balls on top of their house as well. I wouldn't do. Um, just a second. Sorry. Um, they've got a sunken garden back here, and um, there, there was there were some decorative. Um, um, stones at um, at Condi, um, a dormer pediment, and, and, a, and they've taken them um, and they've put them into the garden at Duplin Castle. 
We've been there a few times, but um, I asked them for this um, um, gathering as well, and they said no. Declaration of our growth and um, actually, it's out of oh, that's it. That that is um, Sir William Oliphant's um, um, seal um, on the Declaration of our growth. Okay, um, and that's a, a, you know, a drawing of it, and also um, of Robert Bruce. So, Sir William died in 1329, the same year as King Robert died. Um, he was actually described as um, Lord um, Oliphant uh, or Lord Aberdeegi. Um, and I mean, the whole spirit thing is, is an, another um, um, big subject, um, and I'm not going to go into it at the moment. Um, right, carry on. Okay, so who succeeded him? Um, we've, we've been incredibly lucky through um, the last um, 150 years. We've had a, a succession of people who have been who have taken a great interest in um, the Oliphant history. And um, about 120 years ago, the keeper of the Scottish archive um, was a, a chap called um, John Maitland Thompson, and he married an Oliphant of Fondi. And so he made it his life's work to uh, sift through all the documents he could get his hands on to find any records of Oliphant, and he found a um, he's recorded a, a huge amount of information. And here we've got Sir William, captain of Stirling Castle, um, married, blank, Douglas, blank, to the uh, uh, Lord of Douglas. So we don't know her name. That family. Sorry, were you putting your hand up? Rich? All oh, right, okay, sorry. So basically, um, but it goes on and says he died immediately um, after um, his um, um, for, for the deed. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, it, what it says, it, we don't mean it anyway. Um, uh, evidence, presumably. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, and more. Um, it seems that there, there were two men of the name. Um, I told you about the Battle of Dunbar. Um, there were two men. Um, Um, it gave us a clue of you know what um, that they were a different age, but um, we didn't know exactly. Um, one was in um, the, um, Devizes Castle, and the other in Rochester's Castle. Now, interesting, and I'm not going to tell you why. Sorry, my, um, Richard Seward, who engaged um, that said prisoner, um, should follow the said Richard across the sea with horses and arms, and would serve the king well and faithfully. He got them out of prison. Okay, does anyone um, remember the name Seward from anywhere? Nope. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'm not going to tell you. Right, let's go on. <laughs> right. Uh, and thus lulled into a fancy. Um, this is um, jumping um, to after they've been in prison in England for the, after the siege of Stirling Castle. Basically, Sir William Bonaparte, the older one, was released from prison and on, on the condition that he served Edward II of Scotland. And if that sounds terrible, and it was, um, then just remember, if you've seen the film Braveheart, that um, Robert the Bruce changed sides as well um, during um, Wallace's time, yeah? They did in those, people had vested into interest on both sides of the border. And so, um, you know, they, they, they did what they had to. Um, but he was, put in charge of um, Perth, and Robert the Bruce came and laid siege and then um, tricked him because he, took, um, he then withdrew from the siege um, and hid and then came back at night and took Perth. And basically, Oliphard was taken, and the rest of the principal men of the Scottish party who had held the town were put to death. He was spared and, um, in banishment to the Western Isles. Yeah? Why was he spared? Why, why wasn't he executed with the rest? 
And why were the arrests executed and, and not spared as well? Um, okay, um, but hold that thought. Um, from the time of his banishment in the, uh, till after the crowning glory in 1314, we lose sight of the doughty constable of Stirling Castle in Tully. Some people say he died with trace and that the subsequent charters that, and, and lands that were given, etc., were to him. Um, but um, anyway, right, let's move on. I, Gordon McGregor is amazing. He, he's doing research all the time, and in, he's reading all kinds of documents. And he said, um, on another matter, I recently bought an old set of the Register of Aberbrothwell um, in, in old language. Um, and um, note, um, one of the witnesses was William Oliphard, son of Philip Oliphard. Okay, so the, the esquire, um, um, who was not yet a knight at Dunbar, we now know that he was the son of Philip Oliphard. First time we've got the proof of, what, um, of, of that, um, of the descent, yeah? Um, while a witness um, to another charter is William Oliphard, brother of Philip, Philip Oliphant. So now we've got confirmation that Philip and William, um, who, the William who defended Stirling Castle, were brothers. We also know that the other William was the son of, um, of Philip. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, on. So we've got. Other Philip. Then we've got um, William Oliphant, the 10th chief. And then we've got a Walter Oliphant who married Elizabeth Bruce. So that is how that fits together. And we didn't know. And, and, and it's only a very year that actually we've put the pieces together. And that, that's very new. new. Um, Gordon in his book has um, put it in or um, sketched it in. But um, now we've got the, the, the evidence. Yeah? Keep going. Okay. So, um, Okay, the out uh, things as he finds them. I'm taking a few hours this morning to catch up with personal research. Um, the lands forfeited by Scottish nobles following the invasion by Edward Balliol in 1332. Um, the, um, the, the Sir William Oliphant, who died um, in thir um, and, and is who defended Stirling Castle, um, died in 1329. Same year as Robert the Bruce, yeah? This, we're talking about a roll of these fans that have been confiscated in 1335 to 36, which were both forfeited by William Oliphard. Okay, so we know that there is one William Oliphard still alive. So that means that the one who's um, died in 1329 is not the same William Oliphard, yeah? So that means that the one who is buried in, I mean, I mean whose effigy is on the uh, vault and, um, you know, the, um, it, it says the defender of Stirling Castle on, on the side of the, the um, sarcophagus, they are talking about the original one, the, the one, um, so that means that even though he was banished to the Western Isles, he did come back. He was still kicking around and, and the, um, Sir William Oliphard, who was given the lands in 1317 and then in the 1320s as well, um, you know, New Pile, um, Oxford, uh, Gas, etc. That is the original one. So not only was he spared after the um, siege of Perth, but he was also then get showered with lands. Um, I mean, we, we, we're just scratching the surface. We don't know the, the half of, um, you know, what the relationship was between the Bruce and Sir William Oliphard, I mean, the original Sir William Oliphard. But what we do know is that the, uh, the younger one survived. And whether or not he had a few years, but um, the, the younger Sir William Oliphard was still alive and um, had both been. Um, so, right, let's roll on. So, going on to the next generation, Sir Walter Oliphard and Elizabeth Bruce, his wife. Yes, carry on. Of the estate, Sir Walter Oliphard owns um, the lands of um, Avadegi and Duplin. Um, at some point, the lands of Turian and Drimi came into the family, and also the lands of Gallery. We saw Gallery House earlier. Um, had also come into the family. Keep going. Um, Kelly and the surrounding lands were given to Sir Walter Oliphard and Elizabeth Bruce. 
1360. We know that they also owned other lands such as Hedewick and Cranshaws, which were the ones that had been forfeit by Sir Walter's father. Um, we are regularly finding charters which refer to lands which um, we did not know the Oliphar owned. I mean, the point is that you know this is not a done deal. Um, all the time we are pushed, uh, we're tearing and um, stripping off layers and finding more and more and more history. And there's so much more um, to find as well. Um, uh, okay, um, yeah. So this is um, um, Sir Walter and Elizabeth Bruce gave all the lands um, that they'd got to the king, um, who was Elizabeth's nephew. Um, nephew. Yes, I mean, basically, um, David II wa was the son of Elizabeth's sister. Yes, so nephew. Um, and, and he then gave them all back with a new charter. That meant that, you know, th we're talking about a time when records were fairly um, not, not wonderful. Here, here is the family getting ironclad um, or gold plated um, evidence of their ownership of land. Yeah? Okay, let's keep going. Um, there were many similar charters for um, their lands because they um, gave them all, um, printed them all. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, yeah, and, and, and the king talked about our beloved sister. You know, David II, he was the son of, he, 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 it was, he was, he was her brother. He was her brother, yeah. So, um, I'm having a senior moment. Keep going. Um, yes, Rich has one of the um, actual um, reconfirmation charters. I, I think so, I'm not sure. Probably not, actually. Not in this talk. Um, that'll be on Thursday. Um, so, um, whizzing, on, whizzing through, where are we? Um, married about 30. Um, okay, so that's Robert the Bruce's daughter. So, so to Walter, to Walter um, and I'm not sure about that. Um, Sir John, um, Sir William, Sir John. These three were really unlucky, um, and we'll talk about them. Um, Sir John, um, Olaf and Abdegi, son of um, Walter, styled in the record. And I'm, when I say the record, I mean, you know, the register, uh, the great seal of, of Scotland. Um, I mean, proper record. He is described as brother to Lord Olaf. Now, the, the first um, Olaf and peerage wasn't supposed to have been created until um, 14... 52, I think. Um, and we're talking about 60 years before that. Um, the titles did exist long before they were supposed to have existed. Um, uh, and that's not the only piece of evidence that says so. But the thing is that he, um, this one was imprisoned, and the next chief, um, the 12th chief, was imprisoned in the Tower of London and never heard of after that, although he was released. Uh, we, we, either he stayed out of public record or he died soon after. And then you've got Sir John, who was the um, father of the first Lord, who was killed in the Battle of Arbroath. Um, um, his wife was an Ogilvy, and um, they were fighting against the Lindsays over who had control over um, the, uh, Arbroath, and um, John died. Again, um, young. I mean, the Lord Oliphant was a child. Um, so, the fact that the records don't actually show any of these being Lord Dobson doesn't necessarily mean that they weren't, if that makes any sense. Um, right, and on. Um, and by the way, um, um, Sir John's father was in the Tower of London because at some point the King of Scotland had been captured and ransomed, and he was released on, um, on condition that a whole lot of the sons of the most senior people in Scotland went and, and were captives instead. Yeah? Um, after Sir Walter and Elizabeth, they linked to Lord Oliphant, Lord Aberdeen, and Lord Dublin. And yet the titles are not known to have existed until the first Lord Oliphant in, um, in, in the early 1450s. Um, yet in the 1630s, where, um, King Charles. Um, in one of the coaches I was um, in, in the Nichols coach, I think I was saying um, that King Charles um, the First came to Scotland. Well, he, he was crowned in England in 1625 and came to Scotland um, for his coronation in 1633. Um, and um, there was then a court battle 
um, over um, the um, peerage of Lord Oliphant, and um, King Charles I was asked by the judge to make the decision, and he knew nothing about law, and um, the decision he made was appallingly bad law. Um, and um, again, that's a whole different um, thing. But basically, um, he gave the title to the Douglases, uh, to James Douglas. As law, um, but Oliphant title changed the name to Lord Mordington of the Oliphant titles of Oliphant, Abadegi, and Duckman. Okay. Incidentally, I was saying to um, people earlier um, that the um, that after the raid of Reuben, where um, the Oliphant um, helped to con uh, helped to conspire to kidnap the king, um, the Stuarts were pissed off. Sorry, were annoyed with the Oliphant, and um, they um, wh whenever the Oliphant sold the property, um, the people who bought the land were given bigger titles than the Oliphant had. And in the case of Duplin, um, they were made Viscount Duplin and a Viscount to a, a, a mere lord. Okay, it's just one of the examples of, of the king saying one up against the Oliphant. Keep going. Um, right, creation of um, the Oliphant title. Simply, the titles of Lord Oliphant, um, in England, a baron is um, a lord. Um, up here, a baron is a, is, used to be a, a, a feudal or, or land based um, um, position, and it was not a peerage. Um, but um, the lords in Scotland were not properly instituted until 1437, and then, and they were called the um, Lords of Parliament after that. And so, um, families like the Oliphants, um, who had been titled before that date, um, were under the new system, um, and it created Lord Oliphant. Um, and um, history forgot about what had come before. Um, um, and after um, 1437 or after 1452, um, the Oliphants also used other titles um, in official documents. I mean, they were Lord Oliphant, Aldwick, Berrydale, etc. Um, so again, you know, this is stuff that um, we we need Gordon McGregor to do a lot more research for us on. Why was Lawrence the first Lord Oliphant after 1437? Lawrence's father and grandfather had been very unlucky. They were killed early. Lawrence's um, grandfather was forced to, to go into the Tower of London um, in 1424 as a hostage after King James I of Scotland had been captured and imprisoned. Um, so William um, was only held for two years, but was never heard of again in Scottish records. Bang, bang. Um, there have been three elephants held in the Tower of London. Lawrence's father, um, um, Sir John, Lord Oliphant, um, Lord of Abadegi, rather, married an Ogilvy daughter, and the Ogilvies, as I said, if you let's skip. So you've got um, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, the successive chiefs, Oliphant, um, right down to uh, William and David. Um, never mind. Um, it, I mean, t basically, the. the um, in, in my defense, in my defense, um, basically, I took out that, you remember there was a duplication of two Davids at the beginning. I took one of them out, and I clearly haven't, on this particular frame, I, on, on the big um, thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I, there's nothing wrong with me at all, is there? No, thank you. I'm wonderful, really. Um, I'll keep telling myself that. Right, Okay. Um, you know what I mean, anyway. That's the um, 12 Lords all of them. Let's go. Um, okay, let's roll. Uh, five, I was saying 1452, I couldn't remember. 1455. Okay, just to tell you a little bit about a coat of arms, um, and going off track a bit, um, you know, people talk about a crest. Where is the crest of a wave? On the top. That is a crest, not this. Yeah? It's on, the crest is on the crest. It's the crest of the helmet. Okay? Um, so, you've learned something. Um, these are called supporters because they're holding up the shield. Okay? Um, that's ermine, um, which is um, dope, weasel. Anyone know? I don't. Anyway, the Lord's Oliphant, uh, 
Abadegan Duckling. Um, right, let's keep going. Enumeration of the Lord, Dolophon. I'm going to skip a lot of this because it, it's a lot of detail. Um, uh, there were, f first of all, 10 Lord Dolophon, then the 11th Lord Clay branch were next in line. But he did have a, an older brother who had died young and had got a baby. But what we don't know is whether or not the baby was legitimate because we can't find a marriage for, um, for him and through the mother. We don't even know who the mother was, but we know that he had a son. Um, so un unless we can find more information, um, you know, it is as it stands. Um, he forgot to, um, to tell the world about these, these brothers, um, elder brothers and son. Okay. Then there was the 12th Lord Oliphant. Gordon McGregor has proven that this last Lord Oliphant was bona fide and legitimate. So, um, because um, w there were rumors um, spread in the 19th century, um, you know, the usual spin, that, um, that because it didn't suit other people who were aspiring to, um, to the period uh, for this line to be legitimate, but it was. Okay, Lawrence, first Lord Oliphant, born circa 1430, first Lord Oliphant, Abadegian Duckling. He was an ambassador, he was a privy councillor, uh, married to Isabel Hay, daughter of the Earl of Harrow. Um, he had many, many bonds of man rent from neighbours, um, said to be the most powerful man in Perthshire after the Earl of Athol. Who was the Earl of Athol? What relationship were they to the king? Brother, weren't they? The first nine creations were um, all of the earldom of Athol. Um, basically, they kept not having children, and so the title came back to the king, and he'd give it, and the next generation would give it to the next, um, in a you know, brother or whatever. But what is a bond of man rent? Does anybody know? No. Uh, basically, what happened was that um, in those days, they didn't have a police force, um, and if you needed um, an area to be defended, you'd get the most powerful person to, um, to say, right, um, if you um, supply me with men when I need them, I will protect you. Yeah? So basically, it was a bond of man rent. You, you um, swore loyalty to me, so it gave me um, men uh, when I need them, and I will protect you in return. Okay? Lord Oliphant um, had... So many, so, so many powerful people signing bonds of man rent to him that there was no question that he was um, not. I mean, he, he was actually the, the, most, the second most important person in Perthshire after the Earl of Athol. In other words, after the, the um, king's brother. Yeah? Um, I mean, you know, the families, th this is the, why, why the Victorians have got it so wrong, because basically, you know, they think, oh, well, you know, the Dukes of Athol, the um, Earls of Mansfield, the, um, you know, all these other people. Those titles didn't exist. We were the second most powerful family. Actually, actually, um, Elizabeth Bruce. Look at, look at the present times. I mean, I know that you're from the other side of the pond, but how, how many of you have ever heard of the Dukes of Gloucester and the Dukes of Kent as being minor royals? A lot of you, yeah? Okay, well, basically, they, 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 would, um, they sprang off from the royal family at the beginning of last century, 1904, 1906. Okay, so we're talking about 120 years ago. Yeah? So at the time that first Lord Oliphant was, um, was, had his peerage, it's about the same sort of time scale. The most important family in, 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 in Perthshire were part of the royal family. The second most important family in Perthshire, the Oliphants, were also part of the royal family. Yeah? Put that in your pipe and smoke. <laughs> right. Um, okay, and on, please. Um, powerful man in Perthshire after the Earl of Athol. Okay, forget that. I've just told you. Okay, and first two Lords Oliphant um, and Colin Master. So we're talking about one, two, three. Um, okay, and on, please. Um, John, Oliphant, because we've dealt the first. Earl of Argyle. We went to Stirling today. Argyle's lodgings were shut, um, but you'll find in your book a little bit about it. Um, what's odd about Argy Argyle's lodgings is that um, on the walls, um, as you go through a doorway, is the letter O. And um, you've, that in, in another building, which we've been to in a previous gathering or two, 
um, is a summer house um, which has got um, the letter O painted on the panelling. And that came from a house down near Edinburgh. Um, and I am sure that it probably came from Argyle's lodgings originally. The, the truth is that they don't really know much about Argyle's lodgings, except that the fact um, that it belonged to the Dukes of Argyle at, some, um, in a, at an early stage. So it's Argyle's lodgings. But actually, uh, the uh, um, brother-in-law or um, um, Argyle's fr um, sister was married to, um, to Lord Oliver. I mean, they were absolutely happy to love. And there would be possibly a part of the original building was Oliphant, um, which, you know, and that's why they're in there. I mean, why, why would the Argyle, why would, um, you know, the Campbell with the letter C have the letter O painted um, in it on their wall? Makes no sense. Keep going, please. Okay, th um, this is Argyle's lodgings from the inside. Um, these are just, um, in a, you can see, sort of washed. Um, talking about has the letter. Keep going. And th this is the summer house that I was telling you about that has the letters O um, in it. And I think that they probably came from um, Argyle's lodgings so long ago that nobody remembers. Colin Master of Oliphant, the second Lord's son, married to Elizabeth Keith, daughter of Earl Marshall. They were a massively important family in Scotland. Oh, and of course, Sutherlands had them as a set of the Sutherlands as well. I mean, you know, why not? Um, um, Colin was killed at the Battle of Flodden in 1613. He was um, father of the third Lord Oliphant and William Oliphant of Newton. Um, okay, and... This is um, this is Donotta Castle, which was the keep um, home. I mean, the, their seat of power, and it was a real powerhouse. Um, okay, and on, please. Um, Lawrence Third Lord. I mean, we don't have portraits of any, not one single one of, of the Lords Oliver. <coughs> All we have is their signatures. Lawrence, the first. Um, in other words, and that's enough in Scots law, even if you don't have witnesses. Um, even today, um, if you put adopted as holograph under your signature, that is as good as being with, um, your, your signature being with. Okay, and on, please. Um, Lawrence said Lord Oliphant married uh, Margaret Sanderland's daughter of um, Sir James Sanderland of Calder, um, who became um, the, the Lord's fourth victim. His son, um, his cousin, Andrew Oliphant of Berida. Um Kirk Hill, which we went to today, was originally Strathbrock. Um, and um, the first Lord Oliphant had bought um, Christian Sutherland's hand in marriage. She was a ward of the court. He bought um, her hand in marriage for his second son, so that his second son would have um, a lot of land, because everything was going to go to uh, the next Lord Oliphant. Yeah? And so basically, but the thing is that um, the, the Sinclairs up in Caithness made it absolutely impossible to, to hold those lands. And actually, Andrew Oliphant only sorry, had daughters, and so it made it even harder to hold on to the land. So what he did was he give it, gave it all to Lord Oliphant. So his cousin, Andrew Oliphant of Berrydale, resigned all his Caithness lands and Strabrock to, um, to Lord Oliphant, Lawrence, third Lord Oliphant. I couldn't, I, in the bus I said I didn't know which one, the third Lord. Um, his distant cousin, Sir Alexander Oliphant of Kelly, also resigned Kelly um, to Lawrence. There's a bit more to that. Um, basically, um, William Oliphant of Newton um, went um, to Kelly and basically roughed them all up and said, sign this or you're going to resign it. Lord Oliphant. Um, <laughs> they did, it was an offer they couldn't refuse. Carry on, please. Okay, Kirk Hill, we went to today. Um, Wick um, in Caithness. Uh, that was because it was Trebrock, which was part of Andrew Oliphant. Um, Wick Castle, Caithness, uh, was also there. You see this gully here. Um, it's um, called Oliphant Heath because on one particular occasion, the Sinclairs were chasing um, Lord Oliphant, and he didn't have time to um, sound his bugle to get them to lower the drawbridge so that he could um, you know, get across. And he just had to get his horse to jump and to leave. The only, thing, only way he could escape. Pounded in Caithness. Sinclairs. And on. So basically, um, this is your, um, just like your map, Virginia. Um, they owned 
land uh, this is Kate um, and, uh, and they actually and, uh, and I mean they finished up with about a quarter of the, the whole county they, they owned more than that um, they, they owned Dakota, which is uh, where um, John O'Groat John Groat, as Richard was saying, was actually a factor to the Oliphant. Okay. Um, um, Lawrence, fourth Lord Oliphant, built much of Kelly Castle. He was the real castle builder. Incidentally, up in Caithness, they owned at least six castles. They had um, a, a number of um, seats. Um, I mean, it was such a vast piece of land that they had big houses on different parts of the estate. They had six castles on different, um, Berrydale Castle, Wick Castle, um, I, and, and, and four more. Um, so Ma, uh, the fourth Lord married uh, one of the Earl of Errol's generation marrying the Hayes again. The, the um, Earl of Errol is the, Richard, is the principal Earl in Scotland? They have some particular um, position, don't they? Uh, I forget what it is, but yes, I mean, basically, it's um, his sister, Catherine Oliphant, married um, first um, to Alexander Oliphant of Kelly and second to George Dundas of Dundas. Um, we've been to Arniston House in the past as well, um, previous gatherings, and that's w um, why, because Catherine Dundas, uh, uh, it was her second marriage and his second marriage, but they had a child, and so she said, look, you know, you've got to provide for our child. And so uh, they bought Dundas. They, um, they bought Arniston. Um, they already had Dundas Castle, uh, but they bought Arniston for the child of the second man. And um, and it, it started an extraordinary line of, of um, Dundases who um, excelled way beyond um, the senior line of Dundas. That's Catherine. Um, they've got the portrait at Arniston Castle. It's the only elephant portrait, um, I mean, old elephant portrait that we know of. She was um, sister of the fourth lord is the uh, the great builder um, in the family. Um, the oldest part of um, Kelly Castle is at the back, um, and that was started by Sir Walter Oliphard and Elizabeth Bruce, um, who um, you know, um, I mean Robert the Bruce's daughter. Um, so basically, part of the building um, dates from about 1360, but. Um, the fourth lord um, then built um, this tower, and it's got Margaret Hay, um, her initials up here, um, high up on the building. And you see, and they've got crow steps. Do you know what crow steps are? You see the, this um, serrated um, edge to the gable end. Yeah, that's called crow steps. And the crow steps. Uh, the gabling. Um, okay, and you only you can only see it if you're looking. Because it's so big up. Um, they've also got the elephant arms on the um, dormer, meaning window in Latin um, or, or in French, Latin. Um, and pediment um, is, you know, something that goes on top of um, things. Right, let's move on. So, Lawrence the Fifth Lord. Um, again, I mean, no portraits of any of these people. I, I mean, we are. We're coming from so far behind now, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't fight and that we shouldn't actually be building and believing in ourselves and in, in our heritage. Because basically, so many of the other families who own lands now can't hold a candle to us. Yeah? Keep going. Okay. Um, own lands in the counties of Caithness. At, so count the counties. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven counties. And in Caithness alone, they owned a quarter of the whole county. In other counties, Perth, states in, in each of those two um, counties and in some of the others as well. Um, to buy the lands back now, I don't, and, and also to furnish them with antiques from that era, who knows what it would cost. But I mean, it would be a huge amount of money. Um, okay, and on. Uh, Lawrence, the fifth lord. By the time of his death, the fifth lord had squandered his entire inheritance. There was absolutely not one single estate left, one single castle left anywhere. And he had been immensely rich. Um, 
The peerage, which should have gone um, to the male line, uh, became hopelessly tangled in legal battles because um, the judge had turned to King Charles I and asked him to make the decision. What is a judge for if not to use in his vast years of experience to make a, a sensible decision? The, the king just, you know, you're, you're a favorite. It, it, it just wasn't law. It, it, it was illogical. And it, and it created a, what do you call it, when, when um, you've got a something, um, a schism. Um, do you, does everyone know what a schism is? I don't. Richard, what's a schism? Hmm? Yeah, it, it wasn't logical. It, it was absolute. Uh, basically, um, cut a long story short, um, it's um, um, the fifth lord messed everything up. And I, I won't explain why, but um, you know, that is a story in itself. I, I did actually in one of the coaches talk about it, um, a bit of it. Um, but anyway, let's go on. Right. We have no portraits of any of the um, first 11 lords, Oliphant. Um, only their signatures. I'm not even sure that we have a, an image of the 12th Lord Oliphant, um, but um, signature, 6th Lord, 7th um, Lord, 9th Lord, 10th um, Lord, 9th Lord. Okay, we're going to talk about him. Okay, he actually did feature in, um, in history a bit. Um, basically, the 1715 Jacobite Rebellion, and in, in fact, in the late 1690s as well, he was also involved in, in the Jacobite um, cause. Um, he um, he had no land, um, and I think he finished his days at home. And um, he fought at the Battle of Killiecrankie, which is a very famous battle and a, an important one. Um, it was uh, so much the story of um, Scotland and, and the struggles, um, you know, um, for independence um, for Scotland from uh, Westminster. Um, the Jacobites won the Battle of Killiecrankie, but Bonnie Dundee, who was their leader, was um, mortally wounded and then died um, shortly afterwards at um, Blair Atoll. Um, and after that, the, um, the Jacobite um, re uh, movement in 1715 just fizzled out, and where they were defeated by the, the, the Hanoverians, um, having won Killiecrankie. It's just tragic. Okay, and let's. Okay, Francis, 10th Lord Oliphant, that's his signature. Um, and the next one, um, basically he grew up in ab abject poverty. He was a, literally a messenger. In, go back, please. No, it's cool. You're doing brilliant. Thank you. Um, he was a messenger in the streets of Edinburgh. Um, he claimed the peerage and then was able to receive an allowance. He died in London in 1748. And on. Um, okay, um, peers sign um, not with their name, but with their title. So if you're, you know, James Murray, um, Lord of Killicranky, then you sign Killicranky. Yeah? Um, and in the same way, um, these are the um, signatures of some of the Lords Oliphant. Um, by the way, I mean, the, the GAT, people think of, of GAT, um, and I was talking the other day um, about, um, you know, uh, the telescopic um, vision. I meant tunnel vision, but you knew. Um, and, um, you know, people have tunnel vision about the Oliphants of Gat. Um, they were a small part, a very big and very rich um, picture. Um, and they were in their, at their zenith, um, really, during the um, 18th century. Uh, but in the century before, um, it, it was really um, Thomas Oliphant of Freeland um, built um, the, the core of, um, of, of the house here. Um, his son was Sir William Oliphant of Newton, um, who was the Lord Advocate and practiced as Lord Newton um, and introduced the uh, process of um, cross-examining witnesses in court. Um, he then had uh, his eldest son on his death, used um, part of the inheritance to buy a baronet. And um, in the 1600s, it was the Oliphants of Newton who um, were the... Um, the shining star in the in the family. The Lords Oliphant still existed, but they were in poverty. Um, and it was then the century after that, the, the 1700s, that the Oliphants of Gat came to their fall. And then the, in the uh, 1800s, 
1700s. It was Sir Oliphant de Condy, who were, you know, um, um, chairman of the East India Company, and Sir Anthony Oliphant setting up, um, in introducing tea to Ceylon and, and things like that. You know, di different families have had different um, times of, of, you know, being of, of eminence. Right. There were four um, gas oliphants who were uh, of the clan. They were 27, and 30. Um, and um, that was the last family. Um, in fact, they were both, they were brothers. Um, and detail about them or about the um, the, the next um, ones either. Um, that was this, um, a, a picture to show you of the seventh layer of gas and the ninth layer of gas. Um, I don't have pictures of the eight and the at our black castle. Um, I, yeah, it would be great to have um, you know, images of more of the, the chief. Uh, then we've got the um, chief. Um, um, and um, got to go right back to where the gas elephants and the condi elephants um, link up, and then back to, to um, the lord's elephants, things like that. Um, he was um, a politician. Um, then we've got um, his son, Gen um, General Sir Lawrence James Oliphant. He was the one that brought the effigy at Abadegi um, um, into the church from outside. Um, got Richard, um, who actually the, um, was the one who fought to get the chiefship re um, re um, reintroduced because it had been, nobody had. For hundreds, he had to prove um, that you know he was the senior male, um, and then you know you've got um, little brother. Um, that is um, the eighth Condi, um, and then you've got him as uh, his son. Um, that's um, General Sir Lawrence James um, Oliphant. Um, he, he his nickname was Bully. Um, because and and because he was, you know, very much a, um, yeah. I mean, he he got things, yeah. Um, and so he rose to. I mean, he he had a very high position in the army. Um, and right, and he was the one who lost twenty five thousand pounds, about a hundred. No, hang on. When did he live? He was born in. Um, I mean, he lived in the second half of the nineteenth century. Twenty five thousand pounds back then that he lost um, was a huge amount of money. And it probably was contributory towards him selling um, the Condi estate after it had um, by fire. OK, and on. Please. That's him, the same man as the young um, man, um, still with a stick. Um, so he started young. Right, um, I have had quite a battle to get photos of the subsequent, I mean, of, of um, um, his son, and also a brace, the next one, but um, I'm sorry for that. I've, I've used, um, you can get software that enhances, um, a pixel up or whatever, that, that enhances um, pictures, and it's done a, a wonderful job of one of the um, and a weird job of um, that, that particular chief. And I, w yes, it says pixel up down there, but um, yeah, and on. Um, that's the original photo that I took it from. I mean, you know, they didn't have a great deal to work with. Um, okay, and on, please. That's uh, the next one, Rafe, um, the 11th of Condi. Um, and I don't think that's the only one we've got of him. There may be an another one of him as an older man. And then yours, um, Richard. Ah, and he hasn't seen this. I'm <laughs> not telling you. <laughs> What do you mean? I I thought you you know cut the the the, the mustard, right? Um, and and Richard again. Okay, and that I think that's the end, isn't it? Yes, you've survived. <laughs> Sorry, I hope that wasn't too much um, information, too much detail, but to try and cover thirty-four people um, in a short yes. Um, yeah, 
Um, hey, can you stop canoodling? <laughs> um, there, there are people who are saying that they want um, that, that PowerPoint. Um, it's recorded. It's still recording. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, shall we um, call it a day? Any more questions? You're cheering that it's all over. At last. I'm not surprised. Yes. Yes. Because the abbey owned the land, the monks owned the land. How, how, how are you going to kick the church out? Yes, totally, totally. You see, I mean, this is the point. Um, you know, a lot of the nationalists want to get rid of the monarchy in Scotland. But, you know, if you have a vacant throne, they, they want to turn it into a republic. My view is that if you have a vacant throne, then it's leaving it open for th that. And, and you don't want that dynasty back because they certainly haven't fought for Scotland. You don't want that, th them to, you know, people to say, well, look, that's your throne. You should be sitting on it. Um, you know, you really want to put something else, somebody else in the place, and so they can, you know, you, they can't come back. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay. Who wants to go to the shop, and, and who just wants to run out of here screaming and say, freedom? <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. Okay. To be honest, um, the...